In reality, the church is a team ministry. When we exercise the variety of gifts and ability God has given us, when we partner and work together using those gifts to complete the vision God has shared with us, we are building up Christ's church. Just as in the early church, there are those who pray, give, serve, teach, and those who are sent to minister. Working together, partners in Christ's vision. In 1986, our family left for Sierra Leone, West Africa. In our six years there, we trained Sierra Leone men and women to pastor their growing churches. As a part of this time, we built a new campus at Bendembu Wesleyan Bible School and assisted with their vision for church planting. While we were there, we witnessed the start of 12 new churches. The reason why church planting was so successful was that the Sierra Leone church had a vision for growth and we were able to become part of their vision. In 1991, the civil war that raged throughout neighboring Liberia spilled into Sierra Leone. Until the last half of 1994, most of the sporadic rebel attacks were limited to the eastern province, far from Wesleyan churches located in the northern province. Then, rebels attacked Kabbalah, the northernmost town in the northern province. Fear and rumors spread quickly. Foreign hostages were taken as the attacks escalated. During the month of January alone, 24 foreign hostages were captured. The situation became even more dangerous as the roadways fell into rebel hands. After consultation with church leaders, a careful consideration of the risks of being captured, and the escalation of the rebel uprising, it was decided to evacuate all missionary personnel. When we learned that we weren't going to be able to return to Sierra Leone, I was very sad and disappointed. It had become our home and the students had become our family. Since the evacuation of missionaries in 1995, the Civil War continued to simmer and then boil over in January 1999. <laughs> Ravaged by war, the country was left in shambles, yet God was faithful. God preserved the leadership of his church. Wesleyan leaders are now in the rebuilding process. Meanwhile, during the civil war in Sierra Leone, God opened the door of service for the Hubbards in Papua New Guinea. The Wesleyan Church of Papua New Guinea had been praying for 10 years that they could start a Bible school. As I traveled throughout the districts holding seminars, I could sense the depth of their desire for more training, for leadership, and for pastors. When we arrived in Papua New Guinea, there was only a piece of land, but the church had a vision for training and growth. Over the next four years, we assisted Don Floyd in the building of a new campus and developed a three-year training program for pastors. Teaching the men and women at the Bible College was a great joy for me. It was exciting to see the women's eyes light up when they learned to read the Bible in their own language. One of the most fulfilling aspects of teaching was to see the students apply what they had learned. The students organized an outreach ministry and funded it from their own small allowance and other gifts. Out of this ministry, two churches have been planted. Not only were we their teachers, but they became our friends. We played together, ate together, and shared life together. The Church of Papua New Guinea is growing. People are receiving Christ. New churches are being planted. One district is planning to divide into two districts. At the center of their vision for growth is the Bible College. God has blessed us with the opportunity of being part of their vision.
Wesleyan World Missions has asked us to become part of another church's vision for growth, the Wesleyan Church of Guyana. We will have many things to learn as we work together in fulfilling that vision. The Wesleyan Church in Guyana is alive and well. For the past 85 years, pastors, missionaries, and church workers have been ministering throughout the country. Today there are 34 churches and 1,800 members with more being added daily. The Wesleyan Church is full of youth and new converts. There is excitement and enthusiasm. The challenge is to see that excitement and enthusiasm develop and deepen into solid commitment and growth. Wesleyan Bible College, located in the capital city of Georgetown, is committed to preparing men and women for ministry as the church matures growing deeper in Christ. Bible College in Guyana is only 21 years old. Previously, students had to go to Barbados to train. Now local churches are sending young people who are called into the ministry or local workers to take Christian education courses. I teach in both the diploma and BA program and have opportunity to influence the lives of the students and the churches they minister to. And then I came to Georgetown in 92. I decided that the time has come for me to start going to Bible school. But one of the things that really um, caused that desire to be there is the fact that I was in, in ministry and I sensed the need for more training, more equipping so that they can be able to perform more efficiently. I will not make any decision, I will not you know, go ahead doing anything without having his guidance, his, his direction upon my life. And he's called me to the pastoral ministry. Last year, I came and I entered into the Bible school, so I'm in my second year at the Western Bible College. It means so much to me. Um, that I experienced him so much at the ministerial retreat that we had that finished yesterday. I got great blessing. To put it in words, there's much words that I could put it in to express how much it really means to me. I'm about to graduate and I feel satisfied that I was able to come. He really opened the avenues to make me to come to Bible school because my hometown is New Amsterdam. It is about from George from the capital city to New Amsterdam is about six to seven miles. So I needed to leave my hometown, find a new job, find a new home and that was a challenge. I proved God that he could have provided a home, a job and security that he will keep me until he comes and he continues to show me day by day that he loves me and that's the reason I will always serve him because I love him deep down in my heart. The Lord called me to Bible school. I was reluctant at first and then I decided and because I realized he wanted to work me to work in the area of missions. I know that God has called me and He's counting on me. There is a world to be met, and I know that coming to Bible College, I'll be able to be an effective witness for Him. Without Jesus, without Christ, I don't know where I would have been. I don't know what I would have been. Maybe I would have been in some prison. Maybe I would have been a murder charge in some cell. Maybe I would have been killed. But Jesus is my all. He is my life. Without Him, I am nothing. Right now he's a father, he's a mother, a friend, he's my savior, and I love him. Even with deepening growth, the Wesleyan Church in Guyana is facing challenges. We have a lot of Rasta problem in our country, a lot of um, Hinduism in our country, a lot of Muslims and, and we're in a melting pot and we need to know how to meet these people in this melting pot. With the 
challenges comes the promise of God's presence and power. We're not sure about all that God has in store for us as we move to Guyana, but we're excited about the possibility of being partners again in Christ's vision for the Wesleyan Church of Guyana. And so the future looks bright and we want to, to just believe God that God is going to, to give us that breakthrough so that we would attain everything that we're hoping for in terms of our school, in terms of our district. Jesus means everything to me. Without Christ, I am nothing. Like the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so without the Lord Jesus Christ, I have no history, I have nothing, but with Him, I have everything. <laughs>